Hi, it's Bruce, and welcome once again to my Colorado Rocky Mountain Lab. And today I'm going to take a look at a museum quality piece that functions just fantastically. Uh, it is a General Radio 722F precision air capacitor. These things were originally designed uh, about 1936. But despite their age, um, they were manufactured for a number of years, still actually manufactured in, uh, in a form uh, very similar. Uh, for somewhere around 14,000 bucks you can get one. It's a, uh, a successor to this uh, original 722 design. But what it is, it's a precision machined uh, capacitor based on the, uh, the physics of capacitance, the, the fact that uh, intermeshing plates, uh, the surface areas and so on, the distance between the, uh, the plates, the air dielectric, they know exactly what the, uh, the capacitance should be. And they mounted a, a nice gear operated drum turner which which then turns the capacitor inside and meshes the plates or unmeshes the plates depending on which direction you're going. And it does so in a very precision way. And there's a scale on, on here. We've got a scale vertically that uh, gives us the major um, indication of the capacitance value. And then we have a scale with uh, 100 marks uh, around the circle and uh, that gives us the minor divisions that are involved in this capacitance value. This unit covers the range of approximately uh, 45 picofarad up to about 500 picofarad and it does so uh, in one picofarad increments and is actually rated to a half a picofarad in between if you go in between the uh, the minimum divisions and with uh, some serious accuracy. So a unit like this would be advantageous uh, if you wanted to check the uh, capability of any meter that you're using to measure capacitance. Um, if you want to relate anything under 500 uh, picofarad uh, to another capacitor, if you wanted to compare and see how they the readings came out on your uh, your meter between the two using this as like a standard. Um, it could be used as a substitution or a comparator uh, in a uh, bridge circuit, uh, perhaps uh, with an old um, uh, RC bridge, maybe something like, uh, like this old ESI unit down here. Um, really quite a few different applications but if you you could buy a fixed capacitor uh, with the same kind of specs we'll say 0 .0, 0 0.05 uh, picofarad or 0.1 percent capacitor uh, you might spend two three hundred dollars on it easily and, uh, and then you'd only have one point on the dial here uh, we've got five thousand points on this dial so you know, if you bought several of those other capacitors to try and span the dial, you'd be looking at spending thousands of dollars. A unit like this can save a lot of money uh, as a standard for uh, for its within its range. Along with this unit came and will come the original calibration data signed by uh, Charles L. Woodford of the Standardizing Laboratory, General Radio Company, Cambridge, Mass. This was dated October 1st, 1954. And it gives you the major drum divisions from 0 to 5,000. Uh, really, uh, you can take the first 0 and, uh, and put a decimal point in front of it, so you'd have 0 to 500. 
and it gives you the capacitance value at each one of those major settings that they calculated and then uh, also gives the difference from the residual calculation at, at, at zero divisions and then subtracts that from the reading and gives you the incremental um, capacitance that you were accumulating as you went forward. You sum up all the incrementals and that tells you the the ending capacitance, the, the differential from the start to the ending capacitance that you had. Anyway, and he makes the statement on here that the calibration is accurate to within 0 0.05 micro microfarad or picofarad or 0.1% whichever is greater at a frequency of a thousand hertz. The unit is, uh, besides being precision made, uh, it's in a very nice mahogany cabinet. Beautiful finish on it. And that's uh, from yours truly. I did refinish this unit. And then the, uh, the top face of it, you can see very clean, beautiful condition. Works like a charm. We're going to test it, and uh, if you'll bear with me, we'll put this thing through its paces. We're going to use this uh, Dur double E 5000, DE 5000, as our uh, measurement device. It's very quick. It's reasonably accurate. I say that reasonably uh, because uh, in the low picofarad range, uh, it actually has a rating of about 2% um, max error. Uh, but when we, uh, I, I have tested this thing against the way the calibration plate reads and it's, uh, it's really amazing just how close it is. So we're going to go ahead and do it and uh, bear with me. Okay, so we've got the Dura double E connected up to the negative lead and all of the shielding and everything that's there. The positive lead we disconnected and we want to read the residual capacitance and I'm getting a reading of about 2 picofarad. So we're going to bear that in mind because I may have to back that 2 picofarad out of every reading since it's going to get added to every reading to begin with. Okay. Okay, at a reading of 0, 0, we're getting a residual of 46.4, a reading of 46.4 on the LCR meter. Then we go up to uh, first major divisions, 200, that they uh, calibrated at uh, GenRad. Make sure we get that right on. There we go. Right about there. So that's uh, 20 picofarad it should be. And we got a resultant reading of 50.9. Taking the, uh, the unit up to the next major division, which is 400, 95, 98, 99, 400, right about there, yep. And we got a reading of 68.4. Going up to the next major division, 600 or 60. Right about there. We're getting a reading of 88.1. 800. 100. Right about there. 107.8. Going to a thousand or one hundred picofarad. Should be it right about there. One twenty seven point nine. Twelve hundred. Just as interested in seeing these results as maybe you are.
148 0 1400 or 140 168.3 All right, uh, 1600, 160 picofarad. Should be it right there. 188.7 1800 Two hundred and eight point well make it two hundred and nine. Two hundred and nine point one. Okay. Going to two hundred picofarad or two thousand on the dial. Whatever. Two hundred twenty nine point six point seven. Take the seven. Okay, going to 2200. 270 point five twenty six hundred two ninety one point one twenty eight hundred Three hundred and eleven point four. Okay, three thousand or three hundred picofarad. Three thirty one point eight. Okay, going to thirty two. Three hundred and twenty picofarad. Three hundred and fifty two point three thirty four three hundred and seventy two point five thirty six three Three hundred and ninety two point eight thirty eight four hundred thirteen point two <clears throat> going to four thousand or forty four hundred picofarad. Four hundred and thirty three point four forty two hundred or four hundred and twenty picofarad three hundred and thirty eight point eight thirty eight hundred three hundred and thirty eight point eight four hundred fifty three point seven four hundred and forty picofarad Four hundred and seventy three point three point four. Um, four hundred and sixty picofarad. And we over.
overshot. We'll come back and do it again. Right there. 493 zero. Yeah, stay on. We want you on. Okay, when we go to 48. Five hundred and twelve point four, and finally five hundred picofarad. This is at the end of the uh, the scale, and and that is five hundred and twenty six point three. Okay, we're point four. We'll make it point four. We're gonna <clears throat> graph these and. Uh, do a little analysis on them. Bear with me while I set up. We'll take a look at the results. 250.1. Okay, 2400. hundred seventy point five. 2600 291.1 2800 311.4 Okay, 3,000 or 300 picofarad 331.8 Okay, going to 32 320 picofarad Three hundred and fifty two point three thirty four three hundred and seventy two point five thirty six three Three hundred ninety two point eight thirty eight four hundred thirteen point two <clears throat> going to four thousand forty four hundred picofarad. Four hundred and thirty three point four forty two hundred or four hundred and twenty picofarad four hundred fifty three point seven four hundred and forty picofarad. Four hundred and seventy three point three point four. Um, four hundred and sixty picofarad. And we overshot, we'll come back and do it again. Right there. Four hundred and ninety three zero. Okay, we're going to go up to 480 picofarad or 4800 on the dial. Right about there. We've got a reading of 511.9, 512. And finally, 500 picofarad. This is at the end of the, uh, the 
the scale and and that is 526.3 okay we're 0.4 we'll make it 0.4 we're gonna <clears throat> graph these and uh, do a little analysis on them bear with me while I set up we'll take a look at the results okay we got the results indicated here's the indicated uh, value that came off of the dials of the of the 722 here's the actual readings that came off of my dir double e uh, here are the actual minus residual which was 2 picofarad that's the reading that uh, I, I would read if I backed out that 2 picofarad that gets added to everything and then here's my uh, general radio chart value and then finally, the difference between my general radio chart and my actual minus residual readings that I got off the Derby double E. And what we see is that my highest error that I, that I wound up with was about 0.52, so a half percent. And I, you know, I got a half percent on the, uh, the low end as well, but the majority of them are like, you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 percent, somewhere in there. I think that's pretty amazing. I mean, we got a the Dir double E is uh, rated at two percent, uh, but it's apparently doing uh, a better job than that, and it's reading, you know, within a half percent of this general radio chart. So then you're left to asking, you know, yourself, which one do I believe? Well, <laughs> believe it or not, I tend to believe the general radio chart here. I think they were probably using something that was uh, exorbitantly expensive at the time to do this. And they probably spent a lot of time doing it, uh, each one of the readings, so in comparison to what we did. So I'm going to use their readings as, uh, as probably the truth here and say that, uh, you know, me being within 0.3 to 0.5 percent of that reading is uh, pretty amazing on that little dare double E of mine. And when you graph the chart, Here's the graph, and you can see that, um, well, if I move her down just a little bit here, okay, there's a little hook at the very beginning, that's the residual, and you're nonlinear for that first step, and then from that first step all the way up to next to last step, uh, you're, you're linear in between. I mean, it's, there's actually two graphs there. That's the... Uh, that's the Dir double E and that's the general radio chart, one on top of the other. And it's amazingly straight. They have one slight curve at the last point. So the endpoints are slightly curved. And that's what he's referring to uh, in the letter that he wrote uh, on the um, calibration where he says for the linear part of the chart. Well, that would be ig ignoring the endpoints. Uh, but he's got the endpoints on there as well. So, I mean, heck, amazing unit, amazing engineering that went on at the time. It's a fantastic uh, physics experiment, really, uh, uh, sh showing the relationship between capacitance and, uh, like I said, all of the, uh, the plates, the dielectric, uh, the angle, angle of um, movement uh, that you did to, to bring the plates together. Um, and they had it all calculated and worked out and, uh, and built it into a unit that performs magnificently. What is this, 70 years later? I mean, uh, that's amazing. All right, thanks for listening, and uh, happy bidding, and I'll see you next time.